in some galaxy in the cosmos. Anyway, the force above and, the, and below is the electric force, not the force of gravity. Gravity reduces to electricity, really. Well, that's my theory. I think I never, I didn't hear anybody else say that. So just a bit on. Unification needs super revolution. General relativistic quantum theory, super method, pro proposed that in similar to uh, that in similar to Einstein, one can start with equations of motion of the classical view and the Poisson equation for finding general quantum mechanics. Only need equivalence in electricity, not gravity. Reduce magnetic field to electric field first, question mark. Since gravity is only an approximation when when have many charges or just have spinning masses, question mark, and too much for us to handle. Einstein used F is equal to MA, where A is the second derivative of space with respect to time from Newton, and the Laplacian of F is equal to K from Poisson. We need similar equations for electric field. F is equal to KQ Q over R squared from Coulomb, and F is equal to QE plus QV cross B from Lorenzo Bayard Savart law. Need acceleration. So, we're going to describe you. Maybe you should dis differentiate with respect to time. Uh, the partial derivative of, of F with respect to time, Q time, times the partial derivative of E with respect to time, and Q plus Q times the partial derivative of, that of V with respect to time, times the partial derivative of V with respect to time. So get the equation of motion of Newton, but it consists of electricity and magnetism instead of gravity. This is needed since general relativity is an acceleration theory. Or one can also use Maxwell's equations. Uh, when you have force, you need, you need acceleration, uh, not a uh, uniform motion or law of inertia. Einstein. Einstein gave Maxwell's Gaussian law of electricity in pre-relativity pre -relativity physics as the partial derivative of E subscript U with respect to X subscript V is equal to sigma where E is the equal to the electric field, sigma is equal to the electric charge density. So can also differentiate with this with respect to time, then the second partial derivative of E subscript U with respect to X subscript B is equal to the partial derivative of sigma with respect to time. But do you need to do it again? Question mark. The third partial of e, derivative of E subscript U with respect to subscript with respect to x subscript b is equal to the second partial derivative of sigma with respect to time. So now I have acceleration appearing in the equation. This is the re desirable since general relativity is a theory of acceleration. What about the Poisson equation? The Laplacian of f is equal to k. But the famous e equals mc squared equation explains wave particle duality. Page 29. Uh, okay. Perceptual relativity. The GR equation summary. These next su super equations summarize the whole of perceptual general relativity of Einstein. They may be they may be more important than the Lorentz length tra contraction and time dilation transformation or even Einstein's famous e equals mc squared. These laws assume a philosophy of determinism in the world of nature and in man, in man or angels. Number one, the field equations are subscript, subscript mu v minus one half r g subscript mu v is equal to minus k kappa minus kappa times t subscript mu v. Uh, number two, yeah, I thought I was looking for Einstein's book, but uh, here the equation is here for the equations of motion of general relativity. Number two, the equation of motion and general relativity are uh, di squared x subscript u with respect to uh, dl squared plus phi superscript u subscript alpha beta times di, subscript, di x subscript alpha with respect to ds times di x subscript beta with respect to ds is equal to zero. 
These two super equations summarize the whole of perceptual general relativity of Einstein, more crucial than SI equals mc squared question mark. Uh, if people know anything about Einstein, they might know equals m e equals mc squared, or often they don't know what it means. Uh, these equations are really more closely what Einstein accomplished. Because special relativity, this is general relativity, special relativity is a special case. But I, I think very, very few people in the world know, know these equations. In fact, they use tensor calculus, which is even uh, mathematicians who are PhD in mathematics don't study, don't study uh, tensor calculus. And even many physicists don't. Okay, so, Tycho, Einstein and Ditton theory. Einstein created the incredible theory of relativity, but only the mathematical arguments really. We create the par parallel logical part of the arguments of relativity theory and generalize each theory also. Title, Relativity of Relativity. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe we give a f uh, philosophical foundation to the science of Einstein, uh, general relativity. Maimonides gave a scientific foundation to the uh, Judaism or the religion of, of Moses. Now science is very powerful. Super critique of Einstein. As the object moves far away from observer, it shrinks also. Length contraction in direction of orthogonal to its motion, which is moving away. I not just length contraction in direction of motion. Here is based on the assumption that I have no length contraction along the diameter of the disk. So revise as such, you have length contraction in all directions depending on the path of light waves and the position of observers. Refutation of general relativity. Unless uh, revise Einstein's theory. Refutation of general relativity is one of the biggest theories of all time. Refutation of general relativity of Einstein. Unless revise Einstein's theory, can argue that these are different causes. So so we still get GR since each each contraction in diameter and circumference is different in magnitude. Anti-unification. Three kinds of unification were criticized. Number one, metaphysical unific unification, trying to reduce all sciences to physics. Number two, heaven and earth unification. Newton and Einstein claims that the same laws apply in the cosmos and on Earth. Number three, cause and effect unification, affecting world and world affecting our mind. Uh, number page 30. Critique of Einstein, etc. He gives physical laws of how a person perceives the world. The world affects the person, but what about how the person affects the world? They assume it is the same, but if person freely uses thinking to decide how to change the world around him constantly, if you driving a car, then we, we can't use Newton's or Einstein's laws, deterministic laws, since none, not even the, the agent knows what he is going to do next, e.g. driving a car, an animal may suddenly appear. Einstein denies freedom. So he would say that today's computers prove that physics can explain thoughts. So do we assume that the laws for a person affected by argument object are the same as the laws that person uses argument to affect the expression of the argument object in the world, i.e. emotions or dreams or morality or intelligence, etc., may affect how and when the argument is expressed. Title Zanabu Super Psychology Multi Faculty General Relativity Theory. Perceptual Relativity Super Critique of Einstein. If we can go faster than the speed of light, then we need a new theory for that. GR does not include that realm. Super Technology also add that weapons may use projectiles which are matter or EM wave which accelerate and travel near the speed of light. So you must consider general relativity to fire or control them. Perceptual relativity, Heisenberg uns uncertainty in, in observation or measurement in atomic scale depends on the method used. One factor chosen for observation can be accurate, but then the other is vague or, or vice versa. Position and velocity. It doesn't matter at macroscopic scale, but it is very important in the atomic scale or 
microscopic scale. Supercritique of Einstein. New era in physics. Einstein neglected to include mathematical analysis of errors in using space and time measures to derive speed, acceleration, mass, energy, force, etc. These errors are, errors are cumulative. His whole masterpiece, li his whole masterpiece, leaves it out. It will be a very complex undertaking to do this. <coughs> Einstein does make approximations also, and at least says that they are accurate for his purposes except for the serious problem of the exclu exclusion of singularities from relativity, which is something which cannot permit approximation methods, and hence this adds uncertainty to, to his adds uncertainty to his super equations. Also Heisenberg uncertainty principle will cause a problem. Supercritic of Einstein. Is it possible to create a general relativity physics without using Gaussian Riemann coordinates, no Cartesian coordinates, but only a new amateur coordinates co comprising both question marks? I use Cartesian coordinates, but unlike special relativity, insist that you must place it on object observed so that the system used has an orthogonal linear met metric, but an origin on the, on the object like the system of Carl Gauss. <coughs> An object, but has an origin on an, an origin on the object-like system of Gauss. Will that be an, the new physics question mark? Since Einstein created psychology, really not physics. Acceleration does not sim, does not imply curvilinear coordinates, since SR is only psychological. It seems necessary to create new field of physical mechanics. So it is possible to use ordinary derivatives and ordinary integrals without cor correction or Christoffel or correction of Jacobian respectively and used for GR and com comparing infinitesimal space time of observed object the infinitesimal Galilean coordinate system and Cartesian system known for a finite region but not curve. Note, don't confuse curve coordinate system not Cartesian an object moving in a curved fashion in linear coordinate system or curved linear coordinate system. Now there's some concepts in mathematics that you can mix up. Right, like also like I said the integral and integral equations. <coughs> uh, it's not the same thing. Hence for constant Velocity physics use Galileo, Newton, not Lorenz or Einstein, since the latter are too take into account psychological factors of physics due to using motion of light to see the world. <coughs> but but will neglecting the finite speed of light to reach object and our observer, will you still get the same result for acceleration or gravity as Newton Newton's result, i.e. if we were if we use a modified version of Einstein's method. He compared Galileo and Gauss Riemann measures of the same space time distance. So imagine a theory of relativity without basing it on light signals. <coughs> Objection, but Einstein said that we need to use light to define space and time to give these concept re concepts real meaning. I take take them from philosophy and put them in science or experience. Can't tell them to be a priori intuition. Like I said, the Einstein criticized Kant. Solution. On the contrary, light distorts our perception of space and time, and hence the world. However, we can we use both the physical theory and the psychological theory to make corrections to our view of the world? A combined theory question mark. Psychophysical relativity theory. Re relativity. We spend most of the time on perceptual relativity, since there is a lot on it thanks to Einstein, and relativity theories of the latter faculties may be similar if, if or we can use analogies. Uh, page 32, Beaton Notes, 2008, Einstein. Perceptual relativity applied. Consider computer design and communications. It is possible to apply GR theory. We can propose the use of microscopic cylinders to carry signals and we can rotate these cylinders either to the right or to the left so the carrier of information 
where the electron fo photon or quark or whatever is deflected to one side or the other as required for logical gate or to link up with destination. It is the principle of Coriolis. An object moving in rotating hollow cylinder will be deflected perpendicularly to the wall of the cylinder. Note, don't confuse rotation and revolution of object. Okay. Okay, number one. Empirical relativity theories relates to sensible world directly. Perception, direct relation using normal faculty of sense of intellect. Direct relation using normal faculty of intellect. Will, direct relation using normal faculty of will. The first one is senses, intellect will. Imagination, direct relation using normal faculty of imagination. <coughs> emotion, direct relation using normal faculty of emotion. Unification, realm of direct sensible world. Number two, virtual re relativity theories relate to sens sensible world indirectly, perception. Indirect relation using normal faculty of sense of intellect. Indirect relation using normal faculty of intellect. Will, indirect relation using fa normal faculty of will. Imagination, indirect relation using normal faculty of imagination. Emotion, indirect using relation using normal faculty of emotion. Unification, realm of indirect sensible world. Number three, super relativity theories relate to super sensible world indirectly. Perception, indirect relation to using super faculty of senses. In intellect, indirect relation using super faculty of intellect. Will, indirect relation using super faculty of will. Imagination, indirect relation using super faculty of imagination. Emotion, indirect relation using super faculty of emotion. Unification, realm of indirect super sensible objects. Number four, prophetic relativity theories relates to super sensible world directly. Perception, direct relation using prophetic faculty of sensation. Um, um, intellect, direct relation using prophetic, prophetic faculty of intellect. Will, direct relation using prophetic faculty of will. Imagination, direct relation using prophetic faculty of imagination. Emotion, direct relation using prophetic faculty of emotion. Unification, realm of super sensible, well directly known. Page 33. Do we need biological general relativity theories? Question mark. I.e., since have faculties of the body also. Okay. Will will relativity critique of Einstein and Kant proof of freedom. Einstein's theory presupposes that there is no freedom exhibited in the universe. Of course, that greatly simplifies the physics, and that is very great limitation of his system. Indeed, his equations don't include a driving force as could be applied by a person to a vehicle. Anyway, there must be freedom. For otherwise, the acts in the, in the, in the world will originate at infinity. But an infinite series cannot be completed. So a free act must start the series. So we accept, so we accept the thesis of Kant's antimony number three, but reject the antithesis of, the an of that antimony. Since the law of causality can be broken, at, le at least in inner sense, if not in outer sense, and pneumonal world as well. Our inner sense is pneumonia, thing in itself, which is beyond experience, not the phenomena appearance. Maimonides says that God is conceived of as the intellect, the object thought about, and the subject doing the thinking. He says this is something far beyond our comprehension. It's, it's all that one simple notion. But perhaps we are also like that, and we thus have direct knowledge of ourselves, unlike our knowledge of the world or God, contrary to Kant's view. And our intellect includes the will for Aristotelians, even if it really they denied freedom by many arguments. According to Kant's view, it is applying the categories of to the ideas of reason, of reason which causes the antimonies. This was also space and time, which are, are intuitions for him. 
that the fallacy in the paralogisms of the rational psychology was equating the ground or universal with the subject, and the fallacy in the ideal was trying to prove existence by the law of contradiction, which it, cl it claims to be impossible, since the categories can only be applied to experience. I remember I, just, I mentioned that about Wittgenstein. Describing subjects, including ourselves, using them caused a fallacy which he calls sophisma figura dictionis regarding the antimonies. So need to be free of the categories to avoid this conflict of reason. Uh, he says that the condition was taken in the empirical and transcendental sense, one in time and one outside time. Hence freedom can only be beyond the world. The world, soul, and God are beyond experience if can't apply the empirical categories and pure intuitions of space and time. Freedom is really a pure concept of causality. We need to prove freedom and refute the objections to its possibility. Anyway, according to Kant, SFV refu refutes the four antimonies. But for Kant, the antimony of freedom, that's the third antimony, is unique that to solve it one must pro postulate that the causality is free or beyond this world but that being the being that causes the effect is part of the world our reasoning faculty may be free since it is, has our understanding faculty as object and indirectly experiences and ex it's an indirect experience itself the, the categories do not apply to reason it thinks through them according to Kant so they may use pure categories. Our solution of the freedom super problem of Kant is that, like the thesis, we need freedom since else have an infinite series. The antithesis is invalid since we restrict this law of causality principle of the understanding to outer sense inapplicable to inner sense. He claims that only pneumonia can be free and not phenomena, but we claim that there that these are but we claim that these are identical with our intellect and will. So there are three realms. So there are three realms. Is that the individual and the individual not just two? So we can you can be free. The subject of inner sense can break the law of causality. I discuss freedom in other places. Kant would also question Einstein's assumption that there is no personal God and re that rewards or punishes people according to, to justice or morality or grace. Einstein felt that people are not free, so that God would really punish innocent people or, or reward them or he himself if he created them. Kant's system claims that questions of regarding God cannot be answered, including even whether he exists or not. And yet Einstein left God out of his system, which could be a very serious fault if God really exists. And it's, it's a completely different universe than I mean, if there is a God or there isn't, because uh, the nature is a, is a dead God. Or you can have God which is a living God. It's your choice. But which is better, I don't know. But really, nature even could be like a computer. So it could be like a still it could be. Kant's uh, scan system claims that questions regarding God cannot be answered, including even whether the, uh, God exists or not. And yet Einstein left out uh, God out of his system, which could be a very serious fault if God exists. God may even change the laws of nature. God, well, and which which Einstein's theory of relativity uh, describes, but uh, God can change these uh, the world, so that these equations won't won't be good anymore. Or the universe could evolve, like Darwin says. People and people involved. We already know that, like computers, all you have to do is change the structure of uh, of a lot of stones and you can make them into reasoning machines like computers just like use uh, silicone or germanium um, and you can just, rearr just rearrange the structure of objects and you can have reasoning machines so even the universe we just have to rearrange it and you change its nature so um, 
you, the physics will change. Kant claimed that there were only three kinds of ways to prove the existence of God and that all we do is to the ontological proof of God and that that one fails. Since existence can only be proven proved by referring to experience by perception and not proven by reasoning alone, that is a priori, can only be proven a posteriori. But Kant failed to see that some things necessarily exist in all possible universe and are hence consistent and must exist in this special universe as well. Uh, actually, I think Leibniz also argued that uh, you also have to show that God is possible. And we do that by showing that God is, po is, is consistent, the idea of God is consistent. It's not enough to show that that God exists in all possible worlds. Okay, will relativity. Critique of Kant. He argued that we can't prove freedom exists in the world, nor prove that the existence of God, nor prove the immortality of our soul. This, these are serious problems. Since you have no freedom or have God or no God or immortality, then it limits our will in key ways. So we need to know uh, the answers to these key questions. If there is no freedom, then it will make us uh, automatons. If God exists, then it affects our, our will of miracles. Death affects our will, have zero freedom if you don't exist. Also, he didn't refute Aristotle on these three key issues. Kant should have proved God exists, etc. And there is uh, Kant did write a book first of all giving a proof of the existence of God. So he said it's the only way to prove God exists. But later on the critique of your reason I think he rejected his own proof. Einstein may have refuted Kant's system since unlike Kant he defined defined time and hence space and hence space by experience and did not consider them as a priori. Kant felt that the world beyond sensibility Kant felt that the world beyond sensibility can be proven to exist, but that we cannot know anything about it, not even that it is in space and time, and hence that there is even motion or acceleration in it. He used light waves as a way of doing this, since speed is the change of distance divided by the change in time. And we know that speed of light can be measured the distance traveled by the wave of light, so we can calculate the time elapsed. Einstein says we understand the nature of light very well because of the work of uh, Maxwell and Lorenz. And Einstein created a complex theory about the world and his predictions were confirmed. Really, there may, there may be one coordinate system of space-time in the world and another in our mind. Perhaps these are related by Einstein's equations. Since there is distortion in space and time, perception by his theory. Again, uh, so here talking about Kant, the debate between uh, the great philosopher Kant and the great scientist Einstein. I mentioned a bit uh, the the view of uh, many philosophers around the. the uh, colleagues or or after them uh, like um, Nietzsche, Husserl, Cohen and Wittgenstein in the uh, late 19th century or 20th century mostly 20th century. Nietzsche died in 1900. Um, again I just read a summary of well I think I think a long time ago I read uh, Nietzsche's will to power, which was his notes. But this is just based on notes, but it's a pretty good summary I heard already. So, and I know these concepts. I mean, from uh, studying many, many other philosophers for many, many years. But, but that that made a big difference the last uh, two weekends uh, studying these summaries. I also studied that. Summary of Heidegger and, and a few other, and so many other 20th century metaphysicians. 
but I still gonna some study more summaries and then read the books themselves. Okay, this is page 35. Super proof of the existence of God. A key question of physics is whether there are life forms higher than man. There are hundreds of ways of proving the God's existence, contrary to Kant's claim, but the unifying method of them all is this, <coughs> in my opinion, Joseph Beaton. Number one, create a minimum model of paradise. This is very hard to do. Number two, if succeed, then you have proven that a very complex society is possible. It must satisfy the dreams of all kinds of people and allow them to be happy forever. Number three, yet the goal of God will be paradise, and it is strange coincidence that this universe may, may achieve it, for nature alone is non-living and does not care about our happiness, nor care if we die or perish or live forever. <coughs> Number four, yet we can conceive paradise, so can God, so can God, for he is more subtle and knowledgeable and more powerful than us, so he, he exists and will create paradise. <coughs> we can create a minimum paradise, uh, we, um, since God is all powerful, we assume that he not only can create the minimum power paradise, but he can that is possible, you can create the ultimate paradise or ideal paradise. Okay, so already I found uh, 200 intuitive, religious, philosophical, scientific, technolo technological, mathematical, artistic ways to prove the existence of God. Well, maybe now it's not 200, maybe now it's more like 900 proofs. Because this is like. Uh, eight years ago, 2008, now it's 2016. So I, I added about 700 proofs in the last eight years. Or maybe 800. Maybe an average of 100 proofs a year. That's a lot. Already have found over 200 intuitive, religious, philosophical, scientific, technological, mathematical ways to prove the existence of God. Really, if God exists, then paradise is given. Since He is so powerful, but it may depend on our life choices also, since we are free to within limits. So angels exist also, since they are the main beings in paradise, i.e. people who died are reincarnated, uh, are there aliens on other planets? Question mark. Maybe today, uh, gods and angels, we call them aliens. It's the modern term. <coughs> Page 36. Perception of the theory. Switch Kant's system into PR. Kant is considered the greatest modern philosopher, but really he was delu delusional in postmodern terms, <coughs> in a sense, like Nietzsche, etc. Since he argued that the transcendental world cannot be known, including the objects around us. <coughs> uh, loss, of contact with real loss of contact with reality is considered psychosis, so listing the 400 or more ways of linking ourselves to reality can show by process of elimination that no unreal thing exists, so helps psychotic people determine what is real and what is unreal. Like I said before now, it's more like 900 or 1,000 ways of proving existence. Even on Star Trek, the, sometimes they're, they're searching for life forms that are carbon units. Okay, uh, will relativity. Okay, free will. Will of God, proof of God. Charles Darwin, 1850 AD, proposed the theory of evolution after a long delay because of the religious consequences. But ironically, instead of arguing against the existence of God, his theory is one of the better proofs for the existence of God, since if you deny it, then you must accept that God created man and thus exist. But if you let them have their way, then God still exists, since if man could have evolved from non-existent matter, since they say enough time has elapsed, then why do they also, why did they deny that God evolved also into perfection, since there was enough time for that too? Some, some cosmologists estimate the, the world to be 
10 or 14 billion years old. In fact, uh, if human beings keep evolving, uh, who knows what they will become in the future. Uh, they say that the universe, uh, even our sun, I think, is gonna is still gonna be around for billions of years longer. Okay, will relativity praise of Roddenberry, but Star Trek is not just his view. He says they reflect the views of humanity in its different forms. 